morning and welcome everyone and I'm excited about this webinar that we're going to be having today. It's um, very much in line with the start of the new year, discovering your why and, um, and just having a bit of a refresh and looking at things in a different way and um, seeing if you know anything can be a little bit clarified by going through it again. So I'm just going to share my screen here and we will get started. So this is about discovering your why. Why are you in business? And, and what is it all about? What, what is actually driving you and, and your business? So myself, just to give you a bit of background on and who I am, of those of you that, that don't know who I am and, and you know why I'm doing this, um, I've been business coaching for over 10 years and um, I have been a business owner for 20 years previous to that. So I know what it's like to be a business owner. I'm also a master licensee of Engage and Grow, which is um, an engagement program of getting people engaged in the workforce. Um, I've been a triathlete for about 20 years and represented Australia quite a few times. So that takes a lot of passion and a lot of why. And I do motivational speaking from time to time and have also been happily married for over 30 years. So. Commitment is my second name and um, I, I like to be in it for the long haul. So when we look at, at discovering your why, um, this is about saying, what does your company stand for? You know, what is so important um, that you supply that, or your product that you sell or your service that you deliver? Um, why is that so important? Um, this is knowing why you're actually in business. This is like the foundations of success to your business as knowing that. So this is about defining what lives in the heart of your business, the whole purpose of you being in business. It's that fundamental belief that, that's behind your business that's actually driving your business so that when we work um, with our business, running it from the why, it's coming from a far bigger place. Um, it's coming from a place that's not just about products, it's not just about services, um, because we're actually selling meaning and value um, that is far greater than that. Um, this is the value of finding out your purpose. This is the value of finding out your why because there, that way we can inspire people and attract people and unite people, customers, team members, clients, partners, all of it, all of them basically to be inspired to actually join on what it is that you're actually in business to do, what that purpose and why is for your business. So let's look at discovering what your why is for your business. So, if we have a powerful vision, so when we look at a vision, a vision is saying, you know, what will my business look like in 10 years or 20 years or 100 years? It's the picture of the success of your business in the future. Having that vision is really important. But underlying that vision is why. What motivates you to move forward? You know, what drives you to actually um, do the actions, do the activities that are moving you closer to that vision, that long-term vision. Like I think it was IBM's that wanted a computer on every desk. Well, why did they want a computer on every desk? What was the reason behind that? So once we know what that why is, then that helps drive us to actually be on the path to getting towards our vision. So if we're looking at identifying our why in our business, it, it often takes a bit of um, reflection to look back and, and, and ask a few questions. So I've got a few questions for you here um, and I'll, I'll see if we can copy them in the chat box. Um, first question here, or you might wanna write it down, is what matters to you most? And this is a question to ask yourself because the closer your why can be to your heart as the business owner and the driver and, and the team members as well, the closer that why can be to your heart, the easier it will be to, to do the things that need to be done to actually get you one step closer to that. So the first question is what matters the most to you? Um, and the second question, what is the one thing that you keep coming back to? 
What is that magnet that you keep coming back to that's important to you? And it's funny because, you know, when I'm, I'm talking to business owners about hiring new team members, it's really important to be um, mindful that their values and that what's important to them is aligned with the company that they're actually um, going to be employed with. Because if they're not the same, it's going to be really hard to get them to join on your, your path of actually achieving what you want to achieve. So the second question was, what's the one thing that you keep coming back to? The third question is, what would be lost if this organisation ceased to exist? What would be lost if this organisation ceased to exist? So what is it that you do that's so important that will be lost um, if you actually weren't around anymore? The fourth question here is what is important? You know, why are we important to the people we serve? What is the, the actual importance that we deliver to our clients? Question is, why are we important to the people we serve? And often it, it's, it's a very worthwhile exercise to actually um, survey some of your top clients, some of the people that love you, because they'll tell you what that is. They'll tell you what you give that nobody else gives. And the last one is why would anyone dedicate their precious time, energy and passion for our company? You know, why would anyone dedicate their precious time, energy and passion for our company? Because we're wanting to know, you know, is this why big enough? Is this why important enough? Um, is it important enough to get other people to be enrolled in that too? So answering these questions for yourself in some quiet reflective time will help you get one sort of step closer to your why. And, um, and by answering these questions, it will give you some, probably a bit of um, you know, added conversations that might help with your team and with your, your clients, um, because they'll tell you some of the answers to some of them, um, because they see a different side of you than you see yourself. So, when we're looking at, at, at reflecting, you know, the world goes so quickly, it's really important to take that time to reflect. Um, and I often see companies that go in this, you know, never ending merry-go-round of one year, one year, the next year, and they're basically, you know, they might've been in business for, for 10 years, but they've sort of got to that ceiling in, in year four or five and then repeated year five, you know, four or five times because they're not taking time to just step back and say, okay, you know, where have we gone? What was our why when we started? You know, are we on track? Do we need to, to adjust anything? Has our why changed at all? Um, you know, because sometimes um, things do change. Um, and then this way, if we're, if we're constantly checking in and having some quiet time um, and taking that time, then working from our why, it helps us to, to make every decision that we make with purpose. And then if we understand why we're working towards the goals that we're working towards, then we make intentional choices. Always having a reference point back to our why to actually measure movement. Because if we never take that time, um, if we never take that moment to just sit quietly, um, so many mistakes get repeated. Um, they're the same things that happen. You know, it's repeat Groundhog Day. Um, and working blindly, um, you know, it, it, it doesn't maintain a very good culture. It, it has that culture of, um, you know, um, factory mentality just on autopilot. So when we make decisions from why that is a very clear, very um, up-to-date why, then it makes choices so much, so much easier, a lot easier. So take the time. And, you know, personally, um, I think, you know, every start of the calendar year, and that's why I wanted to do this in, in the start of the year, every end of the financial year, um, and little check-ins, regular check-ins to see, are we on course? You know, how are we going? Are we delivering what we're doing? So if we look at we've got some clarity around purpose. Um, you know, is it your why that you create a solid foundation for your goals? You know, um, with the goals that you actually have, 
um, is it goals about growth of your business? Um, you know, or is it just goals for sake of, of money? Or is it goals for sake of ego? So goals should be set with an authentic purpose in mind. So it's an authentic purpose in mind because what we're doing is we're setting goals that are in line with our actual purpose. So we're looking at purpose, purpose intended goals that align with why we're in business, why we're actually serving our, our clients and that's in line with our vision. So it, it gives a totally different um, holistic um, point of view from the country and it's got a different um, culture behind it. Um, so then what we're doing is we're cultivating a workforce where, you know, ideas, where, um, where strategies are all in line with actually the purpose of what the company is all about. So if that makes sense, um, when we're talking about goals um, that are in line with, with actually um, fulfilling your why, some little guidelines that you've probably seen a hundred times, but I'll, I'll just um, bring them to mind because often, you know, sometimes simple things need to be brought to our mind again. Um, go by the SMART acronym um, when you're looking at goals. Um, so make sure that they're specific make sure the goals are specific and, and that they are actually measurable. So the acronym is S for specific, M for measurable, A for achievable, um, R for relevance, um, and the last one is T for timely. So if we're looking at measurable, how are we measuring the progress towards this goal? Who measures it and how is it actually being measured? Um, the third one, achievable, what are we gaining? by achieving this goal. If we're achieving this goal, is that one step closer to our why? Or is it just a goal for the sake of a goal? So we wanna make sure that the goal is achievable and that it's actually achieving and, and something that is, is creating us to get that one step closer to fulfilling the why that we're actually all about. The next one is relevance. Um, what achieving this goal will mean for you. Is it relevant to your company's vision and mission and why? Is it actually relevant? Um, and the last one here is um, what is the time frame? So if you don't currently have goals in your business with um, your overarching um, business plan um, and don't have goals with your team members, it's really important for people to have goals so that they know that they are directly involved with the company um, achieving the why that they're actually in business for. So that everyone feels like they have a sense of belonging and everyone feels like they have a sense of contribution. And you know that's one of the, the neurological drivers of, of what motivates us as, as humans is, is having a knowledge that we're contributing, that we've got some, some purpose and if our goals are directly in line with the purpose of your companies, then every single person that's working there knows as part of the culture of the organization that they're all integral parts of it. It's just like they're all cogs of the, of the wheel of the bike. If you, if you have one is, is broken or one spoke is broken, it's not gonna work. That way they know that they're a really important um, element of you achieving the why. So we've got some goals for some team members have we shared them with the team? A part of identifying your why is sharing that purpose with the team. And the best place, the best way to do this is, is, is have it in writing, have it in conversation. You know, your why statement serves to encapsulate, encapsulate that whole purpose and mission in one brief sort of inclusive sentence. A successful why is, is one that is simple, it's clear, it's actionable, um, and it, it's focused on how everybody um, can, can actually get involved with it. Me personally, with our business, um, it's, it's about, um, you know, what we're doing is we're creating world abundance through business re-education. That's what we're doing. That's, that's our mission. Myself personally, my why is I want to touch a million hearts. I want to be a millionaire of hearts before I die. And everyone in my team knows that. Um, I want to leave a legacy um, before I die. You know, many years ago in my 30s, 
you know, I was only given five years to live. So now in my 50s, I'm like, wow, I'm still here. I got rid of the disease and I want to make a real impact on, on those extra 20 years. So my why and our team know, all my clients know, everyone knows that I want to be a millionaire of hearts. People are so focused on being a millionaire of money. I want to be a millionaire of hearts so that when I leave, I leave a legacy of people that I've, I've helped to educate and inspire and motivate about their business um, so that they, they come forward with actions that are going to help them in their business. Nice and clear, nice and simple. So when we look at your why statement, your why statement, it includes your company's contribution and your impact. So if you had something like um, our, our why is to contribute so that the impact is X. So we're saying we're, what we're going to contribute and then we're going to say why, what's the impact, the outcome of what that actually is. So a, a, a statement, maybe something like to encourage and inspire people so that people are motivated to do something creative every day. That might be someone who does who does creative, um, you know, creative uh, websites or something dealing with people's creativity. So take time to write your own um, purpose, your own why. And it might take, you know, several times, it might take some brainstorming, it might take a bit of research, and then clearly um, articulate it. Clearly articulating your why, it's helpful for all the others to understand what your purpose is. And it's also he very helpful um, for you to actually see this in writing as well. Um, and then it's nice and simple and it's nice and clear. So we're saying what is the contribution and what is the impact that your company is actually um, going to um, deliver from actually achieving this. So when we're looking at maintaining your buy, we've got to actually keep this, this why alive. And this is basically at the center of all the decisions um, that your company and does daily and your, your practices of your company daily. So if you've got um, a why that is, is something that nobody knows and that nobody's actually um, got integrated in their behavior, then it's not really alive. So what we're saying is how can your why be alive? and the center of the practices that your company does. So your why is something that should be embedded in every aspect of your company. Um, it's the how um, that you talk about your company. It's your mission statement and it represents how you hire and collaborate also with your team. It's, it's your why is your daily close of inspiration. It's, it's what you know in your heart that you're actually delivering out there. It, it's sort of like you're reminded to stay motivated and to stay on track with your vision and also for all of your team members. So, you know, if we're looking at, at, at saying, okay, this is our why, it would be something that we could be very, very clearly seen if we didn't actually know what it was because we could see it in the behavior of all the people um, that are in your company. So, how would we do this? How would we stay, you know, as, what, as close as possible to our why? One of the things that people do um, sometimes as their business grows, they get very detached from the front line of the business. They get very, um, you know, um, I suppose, separated from the actual um, delivering of whatever that product or services is. So, being engaged in the daily performance of your company um, on a regular basis, this can help you stay very close to the driving force of your business. And this can really keep you at the forefront of is the why being demonstrated in the way that everybody is actually delivering the service that you are um, delivering to your clients. So whether you decide to spend a day a month um, answering the phones in customer service or whether you decide to sit in on a meeting, um, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. But it, it basically um, allows you to have a team that knows that you're regularly going to pop in and be part of all the different processes of the business um, 
you know, on a, on a, it might be on a, you know, three monthly basis, or it might be on a monthly basis. Um, it's basically at a level of engagement that adds value by getting directly involved with the delivery of that why to your customers. Because if you're running, it's your organisation, you've created and inspired the team to deliver on this why. If you're never actually on the front line and, and, and never check in, sometimes it can get diluted and sometimes it can get lost. So that, the, that you as the owner might be clear on it and you might know what it is, but the people on your, um, who are actually doing it are very far removed from that. So I think that is, um, whenever I've seen that happen in organisations, large organisations, it's really heartwarming for the team members to have the CEO um, or the business owner or the managing director come down and spend an hour with them doing, doing something, come down and, and, and serve some customers or, or come down and, and help them put something together because then we can really see that, that that essence of why you're there is alive in all the different levels um, of your business. Make it a habit, put it in the diary, make it scheduled, put it, in a ha put, put it as a regular appointment to, to engage on a regular basis at all the different levels of the organisation, including um, the entry level all the way up. Um, and then what you'll be doing is you'll be ensuring that everybody has that wire live. And if they don't, then you can go in and reignite them and, and recalibrate and, and reassess. Or how, how has it got lost? How has it got watered down? Where have we gone, you know, astray? Um, I hope that makes sense um, because it's really, really powerful. It's, it's, it's something that can keep the whole culture connected. So um, when we're looking at sharing this, it's, we've talked about sharing it with your team members, but also sharing it with your, um, your, your people that you talk to, as well as your customers, um, as well as um, your suppliers. It's, it's really important to, to actually have this why shared with all of the stakeholders that get involved in your business. Now, if your team members can actually articulate your why um, from memory, that is, is obviously um, the preferred because then they really know it. They're very clear on it. Um, but it's something that you're wanting to share with all of the people you get involved with. So this is a major driver of success of, of all businesses, that people that are, are surrounding them. So we've talked about um, you know, sharing it with your um, customers. We've talked about it with sharing with teams, team members. We've talked about sharing it with the people when you're looking at hiring people, um, going through all the different levels of the business, but also um, with suppliers as well. It's, it's, it's something that gives people that clarity of, of what you're all about. So if we're looking at the team, um, when we've got um, the, the company's mission and everybody very clear on the company's mission, um, what we want to do is make sure that they're all clear that it's part of the alignment to actually their vision. So we want it to be part of creating a strong culture. So when we have a strong culture in a business, it's important that they have a clear mission, that they have an environment that is a, a collaborative atmosphere. So that if they're getting off, off track, we can bring them back. That they have a learning environment and that they all are very clear on what their goals are and how those goals are actually um, aligned with the vision of the company and they're aligned with the vision um, of the company's why and how they're actually going to um, achieve that vision and, and how they deliver that why. So when we look at your team, do they all have clarity of the company's vision at where it's going? Do they have clarity of the mission of how we're actually going to do that? Do they have a collaborative learning um, environment? And do they have specific goals um, that are in line with the why? If I was to walk into your organisation, would they know 
what the why is. If we said to them, you know, why does your company exist? You know, what is the purpose behind what you actually do here? Would they know? And if they don't, you know, there's, there's, there's a huge opportunity there to work with them and get them really clear. And do they know what the results are that you expect from them? So a strong company culture is created when the team have a purpose and a goal that they're all working to perform that's in line with the company's why. So that whether you catch up with them once a month, whether you catch up with them once a fortnight, to just have clarity that they're all on board um, and that they know what their part of that is. So if we look also one step further out, when we look at the marketing, um, so these are people that are not our clients, these are people that are not our suppliers, these are people that are not our team members, does that represent our why? When we look at all the marketing um, that we're putting together, it might be blogs, it might be newsletters, it might be Facebook posts, it might be um, flyers, um, advertising. If we were to look through all of that and step back as, as if we were an outsider, could we clearly see um, what our why is. So most businesses, they market based on promoting their products and their services that they do. That's what most businesses do. Really, do we see marketing based on why a business is promoting the product or services? But consumers don't buy what you do or how you do it. They buy why you do it. I'm not sure, I'm sure, um, you know, some of you have heard of Simon Sinek. There's a YouTube out there and, and I'll send the, the references from, from the information in this, um, in this um, presentation to everyone who's on. But his YouTube on, you know, um, why, you know, great companies succeed and his, his 20 minute his TEDx talk um, on, you know, people, um, you know, buy what you do, they buy why, they don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. It's all around that. And it's all around the difference between, you know, how Apple promotes its products and how Apple keeps up with the market because what they're doing is they're promoting why they're doing it. They're not promoting what it is. Lots of, lots of companies sell the same thing as them all the way along Apple's um, history, but all the time they're promoting why why they do it and, and what it's going to give to us. They're, they're, they're basically solving um, a problem that we have. And that's really the essence of, of marketing. It's communicating and educating to our target market the problem that we're solving. So we want to know what the why is because if we don't know what the why is in the marketing, we're not going to understand that you can solve my problem. So setting yourself apart from other businesses in your niche by explaining your unique purpose, what that does is it allows you to stand out because you're telling the consumer a story. You're giving them something to believe in that basically makes what you're selling more desirable and it touches the heart of, of what it is that they're missing in their life that they need that you can actually solve. So your why is, is delivering a gap that they have in their why. And so when we're looking at our marketing, if, if our marketing is just spout gabbling products that we sell and not why and how it can actually solve the problem that we have, then we're not um, giving ourselves the best opportunity. We're not um, representing ourselves in the best way possible we're missing out on a huge opportunity. So um, I would urge you to have a look at the YouTube um, that Simon Sinek does a TED talk on why, um, and it will um, just give you further clarification um, behind that. So when we're looking um, at going through this process, you might be, you know, finding that, oh gosh, this is a little bit hard and, you know, this is a bit struggling. Um, 
and I don't know how to do this and my business is, you know, I can't understand, you know, how to get this. Well, that's where everybody starts. That's, that's pretty standard. But once you get clear on your why, it's so much easier to prevent distraction. And then once you have specific goals in mind that are finely tuned, that are aligned with your unique why and your vision, then as you, as you encounter struggles along the way or as you have challenges through you know, the life of running a business, um, it's so much easier if you've actually got that understanding of your why. That, that helps. It's the fuel that helps you to be focused and motivated as you ride through the challenges that business throws at us. So be, be, when you're met with struggles, it can stop progress if you let it do that. But the struggles are very often short. They're, they're shorter um, and they'll often, they'll help give you learnings that will help you get closer to your why. So staying focused on your why, it will guide you through often to many solutions. And, and sometimes if people have challenges that come up and they just avoid them or they just bury them, they'll often resurface and they'll come circling around again and again. And, and, and if you're not sure of what I mean, you know, one of the examples of this, I've had many business owners that have had you know, challenges over 10 years with hiring the right team members. And then I've talked to them about their process and they've said, you know, and I've said, okay, so we need to have somebody if the, you know, if, if it's um, say it's organic food store. Okay. Well, the sort of person we want to have there is someone who's passionate about the environment and someone who's passionate about um, organic food, who's passionate about health. So we really need to get some evidence of that before we actually hire them. So, so sometimes if people have had challenges with hiring people, they'll just go back and do it again. Oh, they were useless and blame it on them. They won't think of blaming it on themselves and saying, oh, okay, I didn't, I didn't actually focus on hiring someone that was aligned with the values and the purpose of this organization and the why of us. So I'm just going to make the same mistake again and blame it on the person instead of actually blaming it on me and saying, I could have actually delved a bit deeper to find out if this person I'm hiring is properly aligned with what we're all about. So that's an example of someone having a challenge that comes back again and again and circles again and again um, because they've not actually got very clear in their why and they've not started to actually have that involved in their hiring processes involved in their marketing processes, involved in their, um, their team meetings, involved in their operations. It needs to be the, the actual, um, I would say, you know, if you were saying um, the overarching flavor or the essence of all of the different parts um, of the business so that it's, it's, it's actually the way you do your business. So I hope that, um, if you've had some challenges that have come back and bitten you a few times, that if you go through the process of getting deeper into your why, that then that learning um, from those challenges that have come back and resurfaced will then be overcome and that you'll start to get over those challenges and you'll start to break through them and um, learn more about how you can actually get, get, um, get I suppose, out of that circling pattern of having the same problems happening again and again. So when we look here um, and we say, all right, um, we really need to have, um, if we've got a why, we've talked about um, over the last you know, 35 minutes, we've talked about your why in your heart, making sure that you know why you're in business making sure you know what you deliver in business and, and what, what, how it aligns with your vision. Then we've gone one step out and we've said, um, be very clear with the team members that everything that they're about is, is in relation to your why. And um, then we've, we've gone one step further and we've talked about your clients and, and other stakeholders. So the next level on, and this is, you know, when we talk about, you know, level five leadership, it's about, 
you know, being motivated by things that are greater than our own ego that are wanting to make a bigger impact on the world. Um, if we're running a company from our why, but then looking at the environment as well on top of that, it really pulls everyone together in a way that is so inspired and motivated that it, it just, it lifts everyone to a different level. Because if our why can be linked to creating an impact environmentally, then that gives everyone a, a purpose that's even greater than your own organization. So running from the company, from running from your company, from your why basically means striving to make the environment within your company great, inspiring place to work. But if we also endeavor to make the place of the community outside your company a better place to live, it opens a whole new world. So it's creating um, a brand that comes from responsibility of making an impact at the team, customer, and also serving a greater purpose. Um, of taking on sustainable measures and or focusing on um, a community cause, giving back to the community or the world at large. It basically shows that you're fully dedicated to your purpose. You're fully dedicated to your why. And it goes above and beyond setting company goals. It sets your company apart and it, it, it actually gets you immersed, your company immersed in the whole impact of your community um, at a whole, if that makes sense. So I've got some examples here. So if, if you're looking at, say, um, say we're looking at making an impact with the community, then what happens? So say if your company, as an example, is maybe a glass bottle um, manufacturer. So it's a glass bottle manufacturer. Then what it does is it, it, has, um, it has a project within the organization where what it does is, is it gets involved in plastic recycling or it gets involved in um, a plastic um, beach cleanup, um, you know, um, program or event, something like that. I've got um, a, a couple of, um, I've got a, a cafe that is very involved in um, healthy, um, sustainable, organic. So, so they don't have any plastic involved in their um, organization. I've got um, a daycare center that looks at giving back to the community of the homeless and seeing how they can help support the babies that are born of homeless mothers. So it's looking about saying, you know, how does your why impact your community or your environment? And consider setting up a program that allows your team members to be paid, um, a small amount of time paid off to get involved in the community or the greater world um, to actually do something that impacts the, the why of your business, but to a greater, to a greater impact. I mean, you know, a, a small example, you know, my husband's a yoga teacher with these terrible fires that, you know, we've had um, in the East Coast um, of late, we put on a yoga class to um, yesterday in the park for people to donate to um, the fires. To, to have a yoga class in the car in the, and the park to appreciate the blue sky and the fresh air and the green grass because we're grateful for it. So that, that was, um, what, that's our why, but it's actually, it's creating an impact on the community and the greater level. So, so have you got anything involved in your organization? Have you got any programs going that are linked to your why that can make a difference in the greater community that can actually give back an impact and, and, and put it on a greater level, step it up one level. And the inspiration that people get um, from that is incredible, actually incredible. I've got a cafe that's got involved also with um, all their food scraps and they're getting into composting and donating that to the local community um, vegetable, um, what do they call them, community gardens. So they're donating, donating that to the community garden to help people with their vegetables, but that's helping their cafe and it's standing for their why, which is um, caring for the universe, caring for the environment. Um, so I'm sure there's something that your team will, will come up with that actually links with that, that will inspire everyone to the, to the next level. 
So if we're looking um, at, at um, embracing um, the future of your business and, and how this relates to your why, we just need to embrace the failures as well. Um, we have touched briefly on that, but every business has failures and whether it's product failures, team failures or service failures, everyone has experienced failures and challenges on the way. Um, if we stay connected with our why, what this does is, is this provides us a solid foundation to address all the failures head on. And then in the failures lies the opportunity to learn from our mistakes and it allows us to align them with, are we on track to our why? You know, do we have meetings that actually brainstorm and analyze the failures and how we can do better next time and how it's actually gone off track or not? Is that as part of our processes? So what happens is when we have failures in life and in business, um, they can lead to more failures unless we're willing to, to stop, take a look at them, you know, have that um, helicopter view, get the feedback from everybody else involved in your team and see how we can um, change um, for the better for the next time and how we can relate it um, better back to the why um, and not have the same failures again. So another part of this is actually getting feedback. Now I mentioned, you know, brainstorming from team members, but do you have any kind of process whereby you get regular feedback um, and you give regular feedback? So asking for feedback from team members, it's a really great way to get an assessment of your own performance. It's also a very constructive way to help you reflect and grow and succeed as a leader. So transparency comes basically when you're actually allowed to give honest and focused feedback that also relates to your why. So sometimes I, I will we'll see business owners that will talk about, you know, oh, this is, this is, you know, this is our big why and this is our big purpose. And then, you know, I look at some of that or hear some of the behaviors that they're doing and I'm thinking they're not really very aligned. They might be saying it, but they're not actually doing it. So one of the things that we do with feedback is, is just to ask for, you know, what's one thing that I do really, really, really well and why do you think that I do it really, really well? And what's one thing, just one, that you feel I could improve on um, or I should delete or change? So if we're having this feedback regularly, what happens is it, it, it means things don't build up. So a good time to do these is, is not, definitely not aligned with pay reviews. They should never be um, aligned with pay reviews because then people might not tell the truth. Um, it should be um, in a, um, a regular a basis that's just part of your processes. It might be quarterly, it might be you know, once a month, um, it might be in a, in, a, in a feedback session that you're having. But you know, asking for feedback and giving feedback on and you know how we're going, um, and making the culture that that people are are feeling comfortable with giving feedback, so that if you're if you're off your why, you're off your purpose, um, you're not living true to what your company's all about, um, then your team are very comfortable with saying, hey, this was the behavior that you did. You know, I have one recently, somebody said that their company was all about, you know, home life balance and, and someone had had a child at home sick, you know, their wife was away and they wanted to have the day off to look after their child. Instead of calling a sickie themselves, they just said, look, I have to work from home. The business owner was not happy about that. And, um, you know, it blew up. So, on one hand, they're saying they're wanting to have, you know, this, this, this home, you know, respect home and family life, but their behavior is not reflecting it. So we're wanting to make sure that, that we get feedback regularly so that if we are off track of our why, that it's, it's not a problem for people to actually, um, we, there is a framework. They don't have to make a special meeting. There's a framework for feedback where we give regular feedback. When I've done feedback sessions, people actually love it. They love getting feedback. And funnily enough, 
generally when I've done it with business owners, the areas that people have said that they need to, um, they need to work on is no surprise to them because I get them to do it on themselves as well. I get them to say, you know, what's the one area you've got to work on and what do you think your team members would say? And often it's exactly the same. So um, if you're not having feedback as part of your regular way of operating as a business, I would say um, it, it's, it's a huge asset to have it as regular check-in, to see that we're all on, on task. We're all you know, on our same purpose, our same why, and we're all on the same page. Um, and then that way you'll find there'll be less, less bushfires, less things will blow up because there'll be less um, things stored um, in people. So the other one is celebrating. It's really important to celebrate the successes of your business. Celebrating milestones are another way to stay on track with your why, stay on track with the goals. It's a great way to acknowledge the team um, and, and for the value that they add to the company and to recognise them, that they're, how they're fulfilling the why of the organisation, how we're, we're getting you know, um, a little bit closer. Some ways that people celebrate are you know, just you know, they're relative to what's right for your business. Um, I, you know, I had one guy that took 25 people to Bali for the weekend, which was incredible. And they've talked about it for years on. Um, another, another person took, took them out on a Uber, um, another company, Uber, um, what was it called? It was a Hummer, stretch Hummer. And they went out to a winery for the day. So others, you know, pizza and watching, you know, footy is fine. Um, going, you know, out for a 10 pin bowling. What have you done to reward your team lately? What have you done to celebrate that we're on track? We are delivering what we say we're going to deliver. We're on um, purpose for delivering our why. Have you done anything lately? Or do you have anything scheduled to just go back and say, hey, thanks, guys. You're amazing. This is what we've achieved. And we couldn't have done it without everyone here today. And, and it's important for people to know that, you know, one of the, I talked about the, the neurological motivators of us as humans and what engages us. One of them is reward and recognition. And number one is not money. Business owners often think it's money. It's not. So getting them together to celebrate your wins, to say thanks. You guys are amazing. We have contributed this. We have done this. You're all part of this amazing success. That means the world to somebody, an absolute world to somebody. So when was the last time you did it? And the scheduler, put it in. Um, it's, it's very motivating as well as fun and just brings everyone together. It's a lot of fun. Um, so in finishing off, um, I'm just wanting to sort of bring it together and say, the first step is understanding, you know, where you're going in your business and why you're doing it. And then share it with your team, break down some goals, have some regular communication with them, celebrate with them, hire the right people that are aligned with your why and, and get evidence of that. Um, make sure. So if someone says, you know, I'm really passionate about this, well, okay, let's have a look at what evidence, you know, what groups you're involved with, what have you done to show us you are passionate about this. Um, and you don't have to do it all today. It could be over the next three months. It could be over the next six months that you're going to slowly but surely start to implement um, because it's like your business is like a sporting team. You know, if, if we had a team that was the most amazing team, it was so great, it went to the Olympics, they all know why they're there. They all know where their goals are. They're like one nucleus. They're, they're a bunch of 12 people, but they're working as one. And that's what an amazing work team can be like if they all join together to understand why they're there, what their impact is going to be, and how they can impact um, the greater community. Um, it just makes um, for all of their hearts to be ignited in what they're doing and fully engaged um, when they're actually there. So I hope that you've got some notes and I hope you've got some actions. Um, I've got also um, the links of where a lot of this I mentioned before, I will send you um, that with the recording so that you've got the links if you wanna look back to some of the um, research and some of the resources that I've used for this um, webinar. 
Um, and, um, and then that way, if you get stuck with going through this process, you can go and, um, you know, say, oh yeah, what was that? Great, go back to the research, go back to the resources and you might um, get some further insight. And that's the amazing thing with this day and age, with the internet, we've got so much information at our fingertips to help us um, to be, you know, inspired and ignited and learn and learn from other people. Um, learning from other people is amazing. Um, so I really want to thank you um, for attending my webinar. As I said at the beginning, one of my passions is to be a millionaire of hearts before I leave this earth. Um, and it really means a lot um, to me that you've um, chosen to spend this hour on listening to this webinar. So I really hope that I have, have touched your heart and that um, I'm one step closer to, to achieving my why um, by helping you um, to find out what yours is. Um, and um, I've got 10 minutes left uh, for any questions. So um, I would like people to type into the chat um, no, sorry, type into the questions, actually, or the chat, it doesn't really matter, um, if you have any questions, and, um, and then I will answer them, and I will have a look at what questions we have got. Let's have a look at the questions, and I'll actually stop um, the recording. So the first question here is, I've got someone who's put in um, what, okay, so what would happen if my business is the same as everybody else's and I don't know what my why is? Yeah, really, really good question. So if you're an electrician and there is a million electricians out there, how can you differentiate what your why is? from another electrical company, which is a really good question. So it's about looking past what it is that you actually do and what is the actual purpose behind what you do and how is that aligned to what your company is all about. So with the question around the electrician, you know, it could be about safety. It could be that, that your why is to ensure that every house that you leave is safe. And what does that safe mean to your organization? It might mean, you know, checking, you know, um, valid meter boxes. It might be checking for smoke alarms. So, so understanding what is behind that, that drives you is the key to actually getting past when you have an organization that there might be thousands of other people that are exactly the same. So I hope that helped. If anyone has any questions, um, please feel free to email them to me. Um, I hope this has given you um, some um, interesting food for thought and I hope it's given you some ideas and some actions that you can get one step closer to making your team or just you um, have more purpose, have more inspiration and have more heart in what you're doing with everything that you deliver for your clients and um, that your suppliers and that your team members and your clients and your prospects are all met with the same passion, the same why, the same enthusiasm. Um, because then that means that you will have a, a seamless culture. Um, the worst thing is when you have a culture where they talk to a supplier totally different to how they talk to a customer, to a team member. Um, it needs to be seamless. So I um, encourage you to find out what that is and then to create that um, seamless culture whereby you're oozing with your why and everyone's you know, hearts and, and passions are all aligned and motivated to all achieve the same thing. So I hope that's helped and um, feel free to email me um, any questions and um, I will hopefully um, see some people getting very inspired and thank you from me.